Okay, hopefully you can hear me all right. So as promised, tomorrow what we're going to be doing is uh, doing a little bit of a binaural drive. Run ZVE-10, by the way. Internal audio on the Crane M3. And what we're going to be doing tomorrow is not using the ZVE-10. Uh, we are on the Delkin Fat Gecko Triple with the FX3. Now we're going to be using the uh, F4 16th 35 by Zeiss. It is stabilized, and I just kind of like the ability to frame without having to choose another lens or another position. Sure, it's an F4, but it should be okay. Now we're gonna have a view, mostly the driver's area from about here to the far end. I won't be in frame except for my hands. We're gonna see over the hood. And uh, the plan is to get up at about 4.30 in the morning, drive to the east end of town, and then drive generally speaking in a westward direction for about an hour uh, just to kind of get that nice golden hour light over everything that the car is driving towards and hopefully that'll work out well um, as to the car itself now not that I've had any questions but I might as well introduce you to it so this is a 1971 Volvo uh, 144 S I've had it for about three years uh, we did an engine swap it is now a turbocharged B230 FT Slightly larger turbo, a little bit of a better cam, a free-flowing exhaust. Uh, it runs on LH 2.4. If you're a Volvo person, you know what that means. It's the stock uh, fuel injection and engine management system, which I would prefer versus a Mega Squirt because it always starts, it always runs in parts. All this OEM stuff, you can still get it at Volvo. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is uh, a bit of a project. But it's a project that's pretty close to done, but is any project really ever done? I don't think so. But uh, yeah, so that is the binaural plan for tomorrow. I don't have the keys on me, but I'll show you something that you won't really get to see during the run. So this gauge cluster oh, was built by me as the result of a speeding ticket. So what happened was, the stock gauges, if you're familiar with the Volvo 140, it has this ribbon which goes along the top and it shows you your speed in, in kind of just a line and the line gets longer the faster you go and mine broke. So what I ended up doing was pulling all the gauges from elsewhere in the car and setting everything up here. So we have our AEM air fuel ratio, our true boost controller, water temperature, GPS speedo, uh, fuel, oil pressure, and a tack. And this is kind of reminiscent of a different set of rally-inspired gauges that Volvo sold as an option when these cars were new. Uh, I think it's the, the R gauge. But on eBay, those are like five, 600 bucks. And I was like, I don't really feel like doing that. So I just broke some metal, trimmed it, painted it to kind of match the dash, and then sunk all the gauges in there. When it's lit up, it's great. Everything's in red. Uh, so all of the readouts don't really mess with your night vision, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, the rest of the car is what it is. That radio does not work, but I don't care. I don't really use a radio. To get the B230 to work, we ended up slightly modifying the tunnel with an ammo can and a big old shifter. And you know what this is attached to. This is attached to a T5 out of a turbo Thunderbird. And that is mated to the engine through uh, an adapter plate that Yoshifab, I believe, produces. And uh, yeah, that's the internal view inside ye old Volvo 144S. Her name is Ether. That's what's on the plate. And uh, yeah, so early tomorrow we'll be doing our filming. I hope you uh, get to see the video eventually. So I'm not sure when it'll actually get published. But uh, yeah, if you're subscribed, you'll see it. Have a great evening. Oh yeah. So that was purchased at the museum in Jasper, Alberta. It's an actual old, like vintage period uh, window clinger from like the 60s or the 50s or something like that. You can tell it's old because there's still snow on Edith Cavell while the trees are green. A very UV faded copy of Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? The shop that helped me build it. And this seems fitting for a car that has a swap and of course a plate from 1971. There you go. 
So now you know what you're going to take for a drive tomorrow.